This man makes some weird films. Yorgos Lanthimos is a Greek director known for his experimental, really art house, absurd films. I was very taken by this unnatural, surreal, absurd, recognisable style that he has. And I guess the big question that I really wanted to answer in this audiovisual essay is what makes Yorgos Lanthimos' films so recognisably strange and unique, yet visually beautiful and appealing? And I suppose how he utilises his signature style to contribute to his storytelling and what makes it so effective. One of the first things people noticed while watching Lanthimos' films, and so did I, was this unnatural quality that they all have. I think it's a large part to why his work is seen as more experimental and fitting into the more art house cinema category instead of the more predictable mainstream Hollywood style with standardised storytelling practices centred more around linearity. In all of his movies that I watched, actors are directed to use unconventional ways of acting and talking and the overall visual and acting stylization shatter conventions of realism. Now have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. Because lobsters live for over 100 years. I also like the sea, very much. As you can see in this scene, actors often speak monotonely and kind of use dialogue as if they are speaking from a memorised script, which I suppose that really is what actors are doing, but obviously directors usually strive to cover this up and um, conceal the fact that what is being said is rehearsed. But Lanthimos does the opposite and he really emphasises this point. And the robotic tone disconnects the viewer from the story instead of immersing them. And it really reminds the viewer that what they are seeing is made up and it really um, takes you out of the experience and makes it sort of jarring, I suppose. Stop it! Stop! And this is a big part of his absurdist style, kind of reminding you that what you are seeing is a made-up story, which is very different to most movies. <laughs> Despite using these techniques that intentionally disconnect the viewer from the story, Lanthimos does actually utilise techniques to absorb the audience and make the audience feel as if they are a part of the story. One of the most obvious techniques that he uses is um, his filming style by using a dynamic camera. With the way that Lanthimos films his shots, the camera seems to react to events in the story and it really acts as if it were an entity of its own in this made-up fictional world. This especially happens in The Lobster where the camera starts to follow his characters with a moving camera. Something else I find really interesting and immersive in all of Lanthimos' films is how he sometimes um, shoots from inconspicuous angles. Here the viewer feels to be spying on the characters, making the watching experience uncomfortable and tense since the audience really feels as if they are watching something secret or forbidden. And I suppose that could also add to this, like when you get an adrenaline rush because you're doing something forbidden. But Lanthimos also uses unexpected camera placement angles and compositions, such as in The Favourite. Here the director's wide angles become even wider to the point of fisheye, and it really makes the character seem small and insignificant and really exaggerates their helplessness. He also uses extreme, uncomfortable close-ups, um, compositions showing lower body shots only, and other unexpected techniques. And these shots are fascinating and engaging, but they do the opposite again and they disconnect you from the story. Since what you're seeing is so extreme, they're comparatively jarring and kind of pull you out of the experience. Another aspect of stylization in Lanthimos' work is his signature muted and cold toned colour palette. It's subtle and it might not seem so obvious, but it really adds this tone to his body of work um, and it really plays into the story and continues to um, help to manipulate the audience. Lanthimos' more signature colour palette is one of white, grey and blue, which really helps to make his fictional world seem 
dampened and sad. Of course with the themes and the topics that Lanthimos often explores, such as social issues and the struggles of individuals, this can be very fitting and can really help to visually depict the tone in the story. And although this is obviously not visually accurate to what you'd see in everyday life, it adds this tone um, which is very important to the reality in the story if that makes sense. And of course it continues to contribute to this really interesting and recognisable um, signature style that he has. As a visual artist myself, I can definitely say that what makes Lanthimos' work so appealing to me is how he uses these techniques to create such a signature style to visually tell his stories. I certainly appreciate the artistic aspects that this adds to his work, however I'm also convinced that this is why his work is so successful globally. Even his non-English films like Dogtooth managed to appeal to a wide audience even though the themes and the story might be connected to for example social contexts in Greece that not everyone would understand. Thus Lanthimos transcends cultural and language barriers through artistic expression. My favourite aspects of his films are the metaphors and the symbols used that contribute to telling the story rather than just using dialogue for example. He shows us instead of tells us such as how he uses angles in The Favourite to depict power, or how he uses mirrors in Dogtooth to show self-discovery and awareness. Paralleling the real world this way is something that we can all connect to. I mean, art is universal and it can be globally appreciated. Thanks for watching.